Hi, everyone. And thank you for having me here tonight. This is an awesome experience for me. First time to be a part of this particular event at Austin Liddy Limit. Um, I'm going to read chapter one for you. So I hope you enjoy. For the sinner is condemned to hell. Pastor Tom's words echoed through the church as he said again, the sinner is condemned to hell, eternal damnation for his sins. By lusting after another man's wife, he does not know God. The pastor's face reddened increasingly with fury on each word, and his finger pointed to the sinful congregation before him, condemning all. He couldn't condemn Lucy, though, without turning the finger on himself. Pastor Tom Moore was a hypocrite. Lusting after another woman was only considered wrong if done outside the saloon walls, and everyone in town, or at least of the male population, knew it. In the town's eyes, the saloon women were a bad habit, just like the beer at the bar that soiled, the soiled doves called home. It was well known that most every man in town went to the saloon to drink. What people weren't sure about was which men climbed the stairs into the saloon girls' beds. Lucy sat at the back pew every Sunday. She knew God was probably unhappy with her career choice, but in her defense, she was just a hurdy-gurdy girl. Matthew made sure dancing with men was all she did outside of helping Miss Betty with chores after the incident with Sam. When Lucy had arrived in Rock Springs, she hadn't even been able to come up with the money for a meal. She thought she had planned everything out so well when she left her home back in the East, but as her Aunt Judy always had a way of pointing out, she was too young and naive to account for bad weather days and wagon wheels breaking, transversing the hard, dry ground. As an educated woman of 16 years of age, Lucy could have taught the town's children, but that position was filled by a woman in her 30s, still awaiting her Prince Charming's arrival, and she had grown to love the children. Lucy had looked at several positions. If she had stayed with her aunt as she was supposed to, Lucy would have been a governess to the children of the bank president, but Lucy didn't want that job, nor did she want to be married off to some rich family, which had been the goal set out for her by the death of her father and the social standing of her mother. To her dismay, the only job open when she came to town was that of a dancing girl. The saloon had lost a girl when she married an out-of-town man and moved off with him. The saloon keeper had provided room and meals cooked by Miss Betty, who looked after all the girls. She cared for them when they were sick and wouldn't let a man touch them when their sister came to visit. Lucy had never been with a man, and the idea of it really scared her. Lucky for her, the girls had to work their way up to entertaining men behind closed doors, and Lucy's homely looks gave her an advantage, as far as she was concerned, because it kept the men from wanting anything more than dancing with her. Tom was a hypocrite, shaking his finger at everyone. Lucy knew his secret, where he spent the late hours of, the three, of three nights of the week. Yet because a man and a married woman lusted after each other outside of the saloon, it was a sin. And it was Pastor Tom's job to remind the congregation how wrong it was. Lucy felt sorry for the woman caught in the affair. She had received the harshest punishment by being forced to stay in her loveless marriage. Lucy knew what a jerk her best friend's husband was firsthand. She had seen the bruises Mark had left on Melissa's back, and they were there before she was caught in the affair. Mark was 10 years older than Melissa, and he had only married her because he needed a new mom for his recently orphaned children. Melissa had been a lot like Lucy when she arrived, penniless and hungry. So she agreed to marry Mark and raise his kids. Until he married Melissa, Mark was a regular in the saloon who found his way up the stairs. He still came in occasionally, but he stayed away from Lucy because he knew she and Melissa were friends. Melissa had admitted to Lucy that she had hoped he would love her, but instead she had become a servant. The children expected motherly duties performed for them, and Mark expected his husbandly desires to be taken care of. They ran her until she couldn't stand up. Mark had a farmhand named Ted who was six feet tall and had brown eyes and hair. His sculpted muscles showed off his hard work and Melissa became attracted to him because he was friendly to her and conversation was something missing in her life. 
It didn't take long for the attraction between them to grow. Mark had caught them three months into the affair when he came home early from town. They were in the bar, barn half undressed when they heard him from the bar door yelling for them to come out. Tim had to leave town and promise never to come back, and Melissa had to promise to stay or Mark would kill Ted. After Ted left, Mark beat her so badly she couldn't move for a week. Mark was a man of high standing in the community with his keen business sense, productive farm, and was considered one of the big men in town. He had a lot of power, so when the word got out that his wife was sleeping with another man, the town sympathized with him and not Melissa. Today was Melissa's first day back in church. People stared at her with pure evil in their eyes, blind to the freshly bruised eyes she was trying so hard to hide. Pastor Tom knew Melissa would be there today, and he knew the townspeople would expect something dramatic. That's why when he was in such a condemning mood, up there getting all hot in the face, pointing and ye yelling, but Lucy knew better. And if he didn't get off her friend's back, she was going to make sure his sins were uncovered as well. As Lucy scanned the room, she saw many hypocrite spaces. This town was a farce. Everything here was built on lies, and it was time the walls came tumbling down.